Hey Channel Insiders, I'm your host Katie Bavoso and welcome back for part two of my interview with CEO, founder and president of Zentegra, Andy Whiteside. If you haven't watched or listened to part one of this interview, head on over to channelinsider.com right now. Let's talk about some of your vendors uh, that are really helping to power Zentegra and helping to power some of the solutions that you're creating. I know you talk a lot about Citrix. Are there any other vendors or specific solutions that right now you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a long list of them. And <laughs> I'm, I'm still extremely bullish on the idea that um, desktop and application virtualization, including SaaS delivery of those through a digital workspace like a Citrix, uh, like a VMware, like a Microsoft M365, uh, it's still extremely viable. I, I, um, I believe I can go into most customers today, even ones that we've been working with for 10 years and ask them about what is your digital workspace strategy? And they're still caught off guard by that question. So Microsoft, Citrix, VMware, an iGel on the back on the endpoint, a uh, Chrome OS on the endpoint, uh, a Nutanix in the back end, uh, VMware in the back end, a public hyperscaler, Azure, AWS, GCP, and others. Um, those things all make up a digital transformation and the digital workspace and what I call Ooh. modern data center. In addition to that, if I haven't said the word service now enough, I'll say it again now. That's the thing that's bringing all this together. And the question you ask is about, you know, helping people be successful with these things, I believe. And, and something like ServiceNow, once we start getting that data in there, now we've got a fighting chance to help people be successful with all those other platforms that could be tied into it. I use the word platform a lot. In some cases, it is. In some cases, it's just an individual product. But getting that product into a platform or accessible through a platform makes it um, the capabilities of what the platform can do with it. Generative AI, uh, just get your handle on you know, what you have as far as data and um, other pieces of the um, IT and other departments uh, is a big step towards that digital transformation. I like how you do say platform a lot, because honestly, for me, it means the same thing in my mind as foundation. It's what's holding everything else up and what you're building on top of. So I do like how you use that word, and I do appreciate that you use it as much as you do. Uh, so going on from there, Thinking about, uh, thinking back to you were naming some of those vendors, you mentioned VMware. And can I ask, how are you handling the Broadcom acquisition and the announcements, uh, the announcement that the VMware partner program is, is kind of done as we know it? Is there anything that you're doing right now as a company where you're planning for the future, potentially considering a another option or getting your clients ready to move on to something else? Any of that sound like something that is applicable to you at the moment? Well, it's certainly a, a conversation to be had. And yes, it's applicable at the same time, in some degree, it's to some degree, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, let me say this. So first of all, Broadcom, uh, and then maybe some of the other things going on, like at Cloud Software Group, those organizations have had valuable technologies and platforms for many, many years that they have sold at a, at a lesser cost in order to try to stay relevant and keep customers these organizations have come in and bought them up and realized, hey, this is a very valuable technology. We should charge more for this. I don't have a problem in the world with that. Now, will their customers revolt on them? Maybe. Um, should their customers recognize they've been getting it really cheap for a long time? Probably. And, and you know, cheap is relevant, right, uh, relative to uh, their budgets. Uh, but it's been a very cost-effective solution stack, VMware specifically, for all these years. Um, so we want to help customers who are going to stay on VMware, which I think a lot will because it's going to be very costly to get off of it. Uh, it's going to be um, it's still a phenomenal product set. Uh, we want to help them stay on it, the ones that are going to stay, the ones that it makes sense to stay, uh, and we want to help them get the most out of it. That's part of the whole value at a reseller 2.0 thing, for sure. Um, you know, it, it, it's one thing for a price to go up, but if you get more value out of it at the same time, then maybe the price didn't really go up, or maybe not as much. Uh, however, uh, there are needs to look towards alternatives, whether it's in the digital workspace space or in this case, uh, in the virtualization stack. Uh, we do have uh, people like Nutanix uh, scale computing, but uh, Nutanix for sure, uh, even Microsoft uh, Azure stack. That's an option for people to be hyperscaler, uh, uh, heading in the hyperscaler direction and then running on prem. Uh, there are alternatives now, and we're starting to run into customers that either are going to stay on the VMware stack, okay, let's help you get the most out of it, and then we're running into a lot of customers that see the cost and say, okay, great, I just don't need to be on something that expensive. Let's explore a Nutanix. Uh, let's explore a Microsoft Azure stack or some alternative. Uh, as far as VMware and us, 
super excited that they chose, they've chosen us to stay on board as a partner. And that's because uh, we have been doing transactions for them all along and they love and recognize what we are doing in that value at a reseller 2.0 model. And they, like many other vendors say, yeah, that's the, that's the type partner we want. That's exciting to hear. And congratulations on that end. Moving on and, and thinking about you, you mentioned way back in the beginning of the interview, some of the resellers and bars kind of being gobbled up by a lot of the M&A activity that we're seeing in the channel. So we're seeing that on both sides of the equation between the partners as well as the vendors. What other challenges are you seeing in the channel right now? How can we actually get opportunities out of some of those challenges? Uh, you know, going back to the uh, mergers and acquisitions part, I, that is just a, it's been a blessing for us. We've got, we've got employees, we've got customers that are working with great value added resellers that got bought up into a larger model. And then they're looking for alternatives. Uh, that's been a gift that I didn't predict at all. Just been uh, fortunate that that's kind of happening. Um, it's awesome really. Um, but as far as challenges in, in the space, I mean, one thing is there's just so many things, there's so many different uh, technologies and um, vendors and platforms and products within those platforms that we need to be talking about. Uh, you know, gaining mindshare with um, vendors while not getting too spread out across them uh, is got to be just a struggle for every value added reselling partner out there as well as managed service provider, but certainly the, on the VAR side. Uh, but it's a, it's a good problem to have the fact that there's going to be trillions of dollars worth of technology sold over the next 10 years People are going to buy stuff. These are budgeted items anyway. They have technology needs that have to be sold and service. It's just a, you know, it's exciting to be a value added reseller. Uh, I tell people all the time, I've been on the partner, I've been on the vendor side twice. You realize once you've been on both sides that the partner side is the most lucrative spot. Uh, the vendor side is nice and safe and comfortable for some people, uh, for most people. Uh, but the partner side is where you really make a difference. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. I'll make it super quick. When I left the partner I worked for before I went to work for Citrix, the guy um, who I worked for followed me out in the hallway and said two things. He said, number one, I know you, you're going to miss being a partner and actually getting to help people execute all the way to the finish line. Uh, and number two, if you ever decide to go start a, a partner later, let me know and come work with you. Is that guy at Zentegra right now? Uh, we've had several conversations. I've yet to get him to move over. Hopefully someday. If he's listening to this, we're sending out <laughs> we're sending out hints. Thinking about the future in 2024, what investments are you as Integra making this year? Well, we're doing more investing in marketing. So when I talk about Integra, I, I really get people's attention by saying we're not a technology integration firm. We are. Uh, we're not a sales organization. We are. We're a marketing firm that does those other two things well. Um, so we're going to be doing more and more marketing to help represent the, the vendors out there that we have chosen, we've chosen to work with because their technology solutions solve challenges for us and our customers. Uh, you're just going to see more and more of us doing that, whether it's digital content. Yes, of course, whether it's virtual events. Yes, of course. Uh, and in-person events. I, I, um, I'm a huge believer and I get almost zero pushback on this, that the vendor world of in-person events at scale across, let's say the top 100 markets in the United States, as an example, it, um, it was waning before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, there was no need to do that. So they, they got rid of those departments. Now they need value added reselling partners like us to step up and do that for them because they're never going to be able to do it again for themselves. It'd be way too much investment on the vendor side to go back to the old days. Thinking about that, you, you talk about chosen vendors. Is there anything that vendors can keep in mind to be considered a chosen vendor by Zintegra? What can they do to be able to get into your portfolio and get a seat at your table? Uh, number one, you know, technologies that are good, great, solve problems for customers, no brainer things for customers to want to adopt. Um, that's, that's first and foremost, right? I think it can't be garbage. It's got to be good. It's got to be uh, applicable to our, our customers. Um, and most are, right? There's most are, without a doubt. Uh, the other thing, the most important thing to elevate yourself in the Zintegra stack is to create your own wave, right? So I'm a, I'm a, I'm an average wake surfer, um, but the boat better produce a wave, and then we can do things to make the wave better. And what I'm getting at is, you know, the greatest surfers in the world can't ride a two-foot wave very well. Uh, I need vendors to invest in some of that go-to-market building of their own wave, and then we can jump in and, and make it bigger and better 
And the vendors have to realize that in order for their partners to be successful, they've got to drive a little bit of that demand, ideally a lot of that demand in parallel to what the partners are doing. That's very interesting. And I have a lot of questions outside of this interview about your hobbies because they sound really cool. Uh, so going on from there, you talked about uh, computers for community, something that you're obviously very passionate about. So talk to me about the charitable investments or organizations that you're really spending time with this year. Well, so this is um, something that my family has done and Zintegra is part of this story. Um, probably the thing I'm most excited about, I mean, hopefully some of it's come across here and excited about what we're doing as Integra, but, uh, you know, making a difference, leaving a legacy, changing the world. Uh, so computers for community started at the beginning of the pandemic where we take, uh, you know, computers that aren't being used by individuals, organizations in aggregate or companies repurposing them into like a Chrome OS so that these, uh, these originally kids, but it became nonprofits instantly. Nonprofits can have technology and eliminate the digital divide that they're facing. Um, so the digital divide aspect is one piece of it. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, e-waste recycling. There are billions of dollars in e-waste sitting in drawers or in cabin on cabinets or in storage rooms. If you took that, recycled it, got the precious metals out of it, uh, then you could turn around and use that to donate to nonprofits so they could you know, invest in their mission. And then finally, the thing that's most relevant at this point for commuters for a community is it's become it's become the um, the go to market for Zintegra's nonprofits. In other words, Zintegra, like probably most value added resellers out there, we don't focus on nonprofits as a as a customer segment. Uh, I have this conversation with our vendors almost every day. Neither do they. I mean, t take take any vendor you want to name. Nonprofits are so low on their addressable customer segments that they just don't do a whole lot to solve it. Mm -hmm. um, Computers for Community is intended to be the partner that goes after nonprofits, helping nonprofits at a sustainable model. So, you know, we, we push back on vendors, hardware, software to get best the best pricing possible. Uh, we market up very little. Our services are, are done near shore and offshore and marked up very little. It's, it's essentially a value-added reseller nonprofit to other nonprofits to create a sustainable IT enterprise IT model for them so that they can focus on their mission and not have to focus on how they're going to afford enterprise technologies. I love that. And speaking of community, I know that you're very involved in the IT and, and channel community and wanting to create opportunities for your peers. So can you tell me a little bit about some of those opportunities? I've heard of a conference discounts, the different opportunities that you're making sure you're, you're using for outreach. Tell me about where can we find these? What are they? Uh, and just go into that a little bit for me. Yeah, it's pretty simple. The whole model is build a community of uh, customers and vendors and bring them together and help them be successful. And that's done through... You know, whether it's a lunch, whether it's a, a webinar, whether it's just a meetup somewhere, whether it's online digital content like all the podcasts we do. Um, and you mentioned conference passes. It's probably the thing I'm most um, at, at, a, at a micro level excited about when I can find a customer who in, has a technology like a VMware, like a Salesforce, like a ServiceNow. And I get to say to them, have you ever been to the conference and met your peers? And they say no. And I'm like, why not? It's like, well, I can't afford to go. It's like, boom, I'm going to fix that for you. Uh, and I know if you do that, it's going to create a, a legacy business model where that person, that company is highly likely, not guaranteed, but highly likely to work with our organization, myself, my peers. Uh, it's just a simple way to do business. I don't know where the world lost sight of that, but uh, we think it's important. And Andy, my last question for you today, you do a lot. I mean, as the president and CEO of any company, you can imagine that you do a lot in that position. But from what I see, you're constantly maintaining outreach on LinkedIn. You're touching everything from toting your vendor partners to engaging the community, like we just said, talking about those events, talking about job opportunities, your charitable work, your travel. You host several podcasts, you do webinars, and you make decisions down to the smallest detail at Zintegra. How? How do you stay hungry and how do you stay informed to be able to continue to give your best every day? So I'll apply a couple of things. So number one, it's a team over here. I, I don't really do anything every day. <laughs> like all this stuff you said, that's doing stuff, but I, I don't even notice it. I, my, my son, my youngest son's 14. He asked me last night, you know, how was work? And I was like, I don't remember. Like it, <laughs> it just happened. And to be honest, they're, they're, it's a team effort. I've got a lot of people supporting me. I don't know that I necessarily have to do anything today if I didn't want to. Uh, other people take care of uh, the things that have to get done. Uh, so I have a lot of people to lean on. Uh, another aspect of that is I'm, I don't actually work. I mean, it's, it's just kind of fun. 
Um, would I like to be out uh, skiing or fishing with clients every day? Sure. And I actually do some of that. Um, but I also don't mind at all doing podcasts and webinars and talking to clients about helping them solve IT challenges. Uh, it all kind of happens because if it's, if it, it doesn't feel like work, my, my only complaint is how fast the days go by and the years go by and the weeks and months go by, uh, because it's fun. Just enjoy doing it. And that, that gets down to my main point. You know, I'm, I'm a 50 year old guy that can't play competitive sports that much anymore. And it's, it's, it's my sport. I enjoy doing it. So it's uh it's not a job. It's more like a hobby. Andy, you have a saying work has no boundaries. What does that mean? Because for somebody like me who can get really into the day to day, that sounds a little scary. How do you make it something not so scary? Well, it's, it's not so much a saying it's a, it's a lifestyle, it's a movement. And we've, you know, we've created this um, marketing campaign around it. Uh, go to www.workhasnoboundaries.com and you'll see this year we're giving away a trip to Hawaii to take meetings and discussions with us and our vendors that we work with. Last year we gave away uh, two Ford Broncos. Uh, the year before that we gave away a, another Ford Bronco. But the, the whole concept is we have known for decades now, or certainly a decade, that you didn't have to live and work in four walls all the time. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to get together. Uh, I think it's important to see each other. I think my team's going to lunch right now. I'm going to go join them in a minute. Um, but workhasnoboundaries.com is the, the way for us to kind of express that concept of a, a work lifestyle that you know, has existed for a long time. And the technologies, honestly, thanks to the pandemic has been a part of it, has uh, accelerated that and got us to the point where it's it's very much a reality for most people most of the time. Highly want to encourage people to you know get together, spend time at conferences like we talked about a while ago. Um, but spend time in the office, but uh, you, you, we can get a lot done uh, remotely these days. And, uh, you know, it's it used to be a joke. People could sit on the beach, like people literally post that they would sit by the pool or sit on the beach. And every time they did it, they would uh, post it online. Uh, now I think people just do it every day. I don't even think it's unusual. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Uh, definitely want to see how I can enter that Hawaii uh, trip. Just kidding. But going on from there, if there was one trait or quality that you would recommend that people in the channel, whether you're a VAR, a vendor, anybody that probably works with anybody here, what's the number one trait that you recommend that they have? You know, I had a um, fortunate moment uh, in my career. I went to work for one of the vendors and I had a, 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 a mentor and they said, look, you know more about the technology than I do. You've got the, the skills to talk to customers. I just need you to learn one thing. I was like, okay, what is that? And they said humility. And it literally changed my professional world. Uh, I like to think I had it before, but I didn't know how to express it. Now I have to, and it may not come off this way to a lot of people because I'm super, you know, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go, we're going to get this done. Uh, but humility is extremely valuable on the channel side, on the customer side, and on the vendor side. Nobody knows it all. Uh, nobody has all the answers. Uh, nobody can be everything to everybody. Uh, knowing that you're, you know, you're limited and having humility around it is just super important. So tell me if we want to engage Zentagra this year as an IT buyer, if we want to reach out to your organization and learn more, where can we go? So there's the, obviously the website has a contact and learn more. And then, you know, just talking about the conference passes a while ago, if you want to go to one of the conferences or a conference, doesn't have to be one of the ones we're promoting, you know, reach out there. Um, you know, let, if you're a vendor and you have customers, you want to go reach out there, that'll start the process of getting us engaged with you for sure. There's actually a contact page I'm sure on the website, uh, or LinkedIn, like I'm super active on LinkedIn. I, it, it may sound weird, but before I go to bed every night, I mean, there's obviously the family stuff that happens, but I check LinkedIn. And when I wake up in the morning, I check LinkedIn. And, and when I, you know, hang up here, I'm going to check LinkedIn, uh, <laughs> private message on LinkedIn myself or one of my peers, uh, great way to get in contact with us. Andy, thank you so much for your time today. I hope to have you back on in the near future. And I just appreciate your insights. Awesome. Love, love doing it. Thank you. Thanks again to Andy for joining me and thank you for watching or listening. Check out all of our episodes of Channel Insider Partner POV on ChannelInsider.com or on YouTube at Channel Insider underscore news and trends. You can also listen to the podcast of this episode on your preferred podcast platform. And don't forget to like and subscribe and follow to never miss an episode. And if you've got a question for me or you want to be on the show, email me at partnerpov at channelinsider.com. Once again, I'm Katie Bavoso, and I'll see you next time.